Hello, Gen Chem 1 students. This is your weekly update for the week that begins on the 5th of April. Um, the first thing to notice is this week we are in an open pie review period in the beginning of the week. Um, remember that you can find your schedule uh, on, the, on the labs, on the syllabus, and you just click course schedule, all right? And so for this week, um, we had objective six that wrapped up last Friday at 3 p.m. And then our scheduled knowledge check to prepare for exam three opened up. And that closes at 3 p.m. today. So make sure if you haven't taken that chance to, to test yourself on what you know from objectives five and six, especially, um, that you should do that. It isn't part of your grade. So if you miss it, it's not the end of the universe, but um, it does help you to know what to study. And then also since Friday, we have had our open pie review period. This allows you to go and do any of the prior topics that you may have missed in Alex or that you didn't know as well as you need to. And this helps prepare you for your test. It also will increase your mastery score. So that is at the end of the semester, you need to know 100% of these topics. And so that keeps going up with more studying. Okay, that open pie period closes on Thursday at 3 p.m. because exam three opens at that time. So you can review anything you need to up until the time the test opens up. The test opens on Thursday, 3 p.m. and it closes Monday, 3 p.m. You need to set aside time um, in between those dates to make sure you get the test finished. Just like exam one and two, you're going to write your answers on paper and I will grade that. It makes a huge difference in your success if I can give you some partial credit, okay? Um, I can only do that if you're turning in the handwritten work so I can see how you're setting things up. I can see you can use dimensional analysis. That's really important. I can see how you're applying significant figures, all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's what's happening in lecture this week. In lab this week, we are beginning in person with group A doing the silver solder experiment. This is one of my favorite experiments because we get to test the same material in two different ways. And ideally, this is going to allow us to check accuracy so long as both answers are close together, right? So if we test something in two different ways and they come up with the same answer, it's probably the right answer, okay? And that's the idea here with our AAS. So those two methods are very different from each other and it's important that you watch the pre-lab video in order to understand it. Essentially, pre-lab video, see it? Essentially, what you're gonna do is work on a gravimetric procedure. Gravimetric means based on gravity, right? So this is weight. Essentially, you're going to take a large piece of solder, which is a little piece of metal that looks like brass. Uh, you're going to take the one gram piece, it'll be around one gram, and you're going to weigh it really, really, really carefully. And then you're going to digest it in some acid. At the same time, you're going to go down here to um, the instrumental part of the experiment here, part two. And you're gonna also digest a small piece of solder in nitric acid. The small piece is going to be used, so that's this part. The small piece is going to be used for the instrumental method and the large piece is going to be used to create a precipitate that you can weigh, all right? But you're gonna digest both of them in the hood at the same time. The, the small one is gonna di digest a lot faster. So while you're finishing, you're waiting for this part one of the gravimetric procedure to be finished, you will also be working on making your dilutions in the instrumental procedure, okay? So at the end of the day, you end up with one sample of solid AGCL in your drawer. You're gonna come back in week 12, so two weeks from now, and you're gonna weigh that solid and it will allow you to do some stoichiometry to figure out how much of that solid was silver and then relate that to how much you start with exactly, well, as exact as we can get, we're gonna use our good balances in the instrument room. So it's gonna be related to the initial mass of your entire piece of solder. 
Okay, so I want to really emphasize this. It's important to understand that when you get your final mass of solid, so that's AgCl, you have added chlorine into that equation, right? There was no chlorine present when it was a piece of metal. You can't simply take that final mass and divide it by your initial mass. You'll get over 100% because you have added mass to it. You've added chlorine. So you need to think about this as a stoichiometry problem. So you need to think about how can I figure out the number of moles of actual just silver that are in there and then get to grams from that, OK? There's a pre-lab question that helps you with this. Hopefully, you get that back from your instructors so that you can write an excellent lab calculation when you come to write up this report, OK? And then the other thing to be aware of is at the same time as you are doing part one, you're going to you're gonna also be working on part two. Part one is a lot of waiting where you're waiting for stuff to heat and digest and cool. So in between those steps, you're going to go on and do some dilutions. Remember that when we do dilutions, you need to use volumetric glassware. So you always get those two decimal places of precision, OK? So after you've dissolved it, which takes very little time, so keep an eye on it, you're going to do these dilutions. And these dilutions depend on the size of your initial piece of solder. And you want to write down what you actually do. You also need to remember that we use pipettes, so we get two decimal places. And we use volumetric flasks to get to 100, so we are able to get those two decimal places. The precision here is important. All right, and so effectively, you do two dilutions with your solder, your small piece of solder. It is really, really important to make sure that that small piece does not come in contact with chlorine. So no tap water, which has quite a lot of chlorine in it. And you want to keep it away from the HCl that you use in part one. OK, so once you add the HCl to your reaction in part one, you can't put your small solder sample anywhere near it because that uh, evaporating chloride is enough to make you repeat all <laughs> of the instrumental portion. So make sure that when you're digesting them next to each other, it's just nitric acid in there, no chloride, no hydrochloric acid, OK? So you're going to take a small piece, and you're going to dissolve it in a beaker of small volume of, of nitric acid. That's not the dilution. The first dilution you do is to quantitatively transfer all of that material into a 100 mil volumetric flask. So quantitative transfer is the deal where you pour the first batch in, and then you're going to rinse it with some more liquid into this flask three to four times. That way, we are certain we are getting every last speck of the solder from this beaker into the first flask. Then you will take a one milliliter pipette and transfer to dilute one more time. So another 100 mil flask. And this solution is what you're going to use in week 12 to test on the instrument, OK? So you're going to save one test tube of your final dilution, your second dilution here, in your drawer. That's the first sample you're going to test when you come in. Well, the order doesn't matter, but that's one of them. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to make one of the standards. So right here, this instruction is about making your standard. These are not diluted with water. These need to be diluted with 1% nitric acid from your chemical tray. Because we have so much nitric acid in our unknown from dissolving it in nitric acid, we want to make sure that the solvent is essentially the same. So we're not going to use water when we make our standard solution. We are going to dilute with 1% nitric acid that's on your tray. You will be assigned which dilution to make. Um, it's either going to be 1 milliliter, 2 milliliter, 3 milliliter, or 4 milliliter dilution. And then you're going to share the data as a whole class. Okay. So at the end, you'll have a solid you're going to weigh out in week 12. You're going to have one test tube of your unknown solder solution that has been diluted twice. And you're going to have one test tube 
of your known solution that you're assigned, okay? That's the experiment. And then in week 12, you'll come back and finish it up, okay? Those of you who are in group B are at home doing a thermochemistry experiment this week. I want you to know this is a brand new experiment. So if you have been relying on um, looking at past reports or any of that, it's not gonna help you. This is a completely different experiment. So it's very, very important to read it thoroughly and really understand what you're doing. If you have questions, the first thing to do is get in touch with your lab instructor or me. We will help you in understanding it. My number one tip though, is to understand that you are not heating up these reactions with a stove or a microwave or anything like that. When you react to them, they will make their own heat. So every reaction that, that happens either absorbs heat or it produces heat. And that's what you're measuring in a calorimetry experiment. You're not adding any heat yourself, okay? So that's an at-home experiment. You took home the kit um, last week, or if you're group A, you're taking home the kit this week and you'll do it next week. Make sure you don't wait until the last minute to do it. You need to bring the kit back the next time you come into the lab. Um, so give yourself time to ask questions, give yourself time to understand what you're doing and um, reach out if you, if you get stuck, okay? So Thermochem's at home this week, AAS and um, gravimetric procedures for the silver solder is in lab this week. It's important to also realize coming up in a little bit, our pattern breaks a little bit. So we've been alternating every other week for group B, you will be in the lab next week doing the same experiment group A is doing this week. That's when you're gonna return your kit. Um, then you will also be coming back in in week 12. Each instructor has their own method of signing up for a time. But the important thing is to realize that you need to know what time to come in on the 21st or the 20th, depending if you're on a Tuesday or a Wednesday schedule. Um, that part of the experiment does not take a great deal of time. So you will come in and take your measurements, clean up your stuff and then leave so that other people in our class can come in. This is necessary because we did the same thing at the beginning of the semester to get everybody started. So in order to stay on track schedule-wise with both groups, we have to put everybody in the lab at some point in week 12, so the 20th and 21st of April. So make sure you're, you're following along on your schedule and you have planned for that, okay? It's important to do it that day because the instrument will be available at that time, okay? We're almost there. You've only got a few more experiments left. You guys are doing a great job, so stick with it. And if you have fallen behind, this is the week to go talk to your instructor for lab or for lecture. Don't wait until the very end of the semester, okay? We are here to help you, but you do have to be willing to reach out and communicate and work with us, okay? So come to my office hours, come to your instru lab instructor office hours, um, get help. We're here. Have a good week.